Investing in a job form membership was one of the first things I did when we started our business. At the time, I wasn't able to afford an assistant, so utilizing forms would help me to save time and provide better customer service. In this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to create your very first form in job form. Without further ado, let's hop in. To get started with JotForm, sign up with Google, Facebook, or an email address. Then before you create your first form, I want you to locate pricing. Make sure that you are on the level of JotForm that you need for your particular form needs. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll notice that with the free level, JotForm branding will be applied to your form. If that's something that you want to remove, you'll need to upgrade. If your form needs to be HIPAA compliant, you'll need to be silver or gold. And if you need more than 100 monthly submissions, you may need to upgrade your JotForm account to accommodate that. So once you have selected the level that best fits your needs, then hop into JotForm and create your first form. In the top left-hand corner, you'll see a green Create Form button. You'll give that a click and you will select how you want to go about building your form. You can start from scratch or you can use a template. You can also import a form that's pre-existing and convert it into an online form. So depending on your needs, just select that from this menu and then continue the process. We're going to start from scratch. From there, you'll need to decide which type of form design you want to have to capture your information. A card form is going to give the person filling out the form one question at a time. So for shorter forms that are more like surveys, that may be a cool fit. But if you want to capture more information and show people all the questions on one page, then you'll want to select classic form. That will automatically open up the JotForm form builder. There are so many ways that you can customize your form within JotForm, but we're going to poke around and highlight some of the most important areas. So at the very top, what you need to do is name your form. So you'll just click on this area and type whatever you want to call your form. And we're just going to say practice form. As you create more forms within JotForm, it'll be important for you to organize them by name. Then if you want to add your branding, you'll want to click on add your logo. Then you can select upload file or drag and drop your file within this area. Now what's nice about my logo is this particular logo has a transparent background. And that is what I highly recommend for people wanting to add their branding to their forms on JotForm. Another thing to keep in mind is you may not want your logo to stretch completely across the top of the form. You may want to make it smaller or you may need to readjust it with the alignment. So those options will be available to you on the right hand side within the logo properties. So if I wanted to make it smaller, I could reduce the width which will also adjust the height, and then I could center it. Now, once you add your branding, you'll want to add some type of instructions to your form. So you can do that by clicking on the area that says form, and you can add in a brief title for the form and maybe some instructions underneath. Now, as soon as you click on that area, it's going to open up the header properties. That area does not have to simply have text. You can add a heading image by clicking on this area and you'll choose a file. You can also change the size of your heading, your text alignment, and you can duplicate this field if you want to use it later. Once you've added in your instructions, you've added your basic branding, then what you want to do is click on the plus sign on the far left side and start bringing in your form elements. 
Now for this example, this is going to be a fairly simple form and you'll see some elements that you can drag in. You can drag in another header, full name, email, address, phone number, date picker, and the list goes on and on. As you continue to scroll, you'll see more elements that you can add to your form. You can even add some page elements like dividers or section collapses if the content of the form starts to get a little long. You can add in a file upload, which is something that I utilize so often in our video business. I would create forms and ask clients for the contents that I would need to do ending titles on their commercials and have them upload their logo directly to the form. And it saved multiple emails. So if you need someone to upload a headshot because this is a podcast form, or you need someone to upload um, something else, a picture of themselves because you're designing clothes for them, whatever your needs, if you need the person filling out the form to also upload content to the form itself, this is the area that you would want to drag in. Another thing to pay close attention to is there are several tabs under the form elements. If you click on payments, you'll see multiple payment gateways that you can connect to your form. Some ones that you are very familiar with like Square, PayPal, and Stripe, and then others like Authorize.net or e-check or blue pay. So scroll down the payment gateways if you also need to collect payments with your form. And finally, there is a widget category. So in addition to the form elements that you see under the basic tab, if you need to add something more specific, like an e-signature or terms and conditions, or even a YouTube video, this is the place that you would need to drag in to your form to add the functionality that you would like to your form itself. So we'll go back to basic and we'll drag in some basic form elements. So we'll put in full name, we'll put in email, and then we'll scroll down here and select long text. Now, when you add your form elements, you are able to drag and place them wherever you need. So once you drag them in from the left-hand side, if you want to change the order, you can just click and move it. Then to further modify it, you can click on the gear, which will open up the properties menu specifically for that particular form field. You'll see things like edit the question text or change the label alignment. So there's always going to be more options available for your particular form fields if you click on the gear. The most important thing to realize is when you drop in elements from the form elements under basic, they are not marked required when you drop them in. So if you want people to have to fill out certain fields before they can submit the form, you'll need to toggle that field to required. And you'll notice an asterisk gets added in red to show the person what is required to submit the form. Once you have dragged in all of the elements that you would like the person to fill out on your form, then I want you to locate the settings. This is probably my favorite part of JotForm because you can super customize what happens after a person fills out the form. This is what's really going to add automation to your business with ease. So the default tab will be the form setting. So you have the title. If you wanna change it again, you can change it there and the status of the form. So if we click on form status, we can say disabled or disabled on a submission limit or disabled on a date. So if this form is for a giveaway, and you want to make sure that no one can fill it out after a certain date or a certain time, this is where you can add that functionality to your form. If you want more options, you can click there 
And you can translate your form into multiple languages. You can password protect your form. You can even encrypt your form responses. So these are so many different things that you can add to your form in addition to the basic settings. So if you're looking for something more complicated, again, all you need to do is click on show more options. Now we'll click on emails. This will allow you to customize the process of emails that will come after the person hits submit. So we have the notification and we have the auto responder. The notification is who will receive an email when a person submits the form. So if you don't want to be notified when the form is submitted, but you prefer for an assistant or a coworker to be notified, you can customize that notification. Simply hover over notification and click on the pencil. Then you'll click on recipients and change the recipient email. If you click on email, it will show you what will appear within the content of the email. So if you want to further customize it, you can do that there. And of course, there is an advanced tab. So there's even more things that you can do under the advanced tab. So again, if you want more features, make sure that you click around within the back end of JotForm. Speaking of additional things, you can click on conditions. Now, this may look a little overwhelming at first, but if you click on each of these conditions, they include descriptions as to what it means. So say, for instance, if you want to change the thank you page, then you would click here and you could say, if someone fills out X, then we want why to happen. So if you want a more complicated form, then you would click on conditions. But for your average form, you may not need that functionality. Then under thank you page, this is an awesome tool to help guide people along in the process. If you want to create a custom thank you page that is hosted on your website, or you want to redirect traffic after they fill out the form, this is how you would do it. So in the case of one of my clients, after a person fills out a form to join their group, I have the form itself redirect them to the Facebook group. It eliminates some clicks in the process and it's really helped guide people along the journey to join. So if that's something that you wanna do, you could click on redirect and then type in the URL. You could have it redirect to a YouTube video or redirect to a specific page on your site that maybe says, you know, congratulations, you're a client or whatever you have as a unique need, you may want it to do more than just say thank you once a person hits submit. You can also integrate this form with so many other apps like Zoom or Google Sheets. So if you want the form itself to automatically schedule a meeting or you want to add the contents of the form to your Google Sheets or send uploaded files directly to your Dropbox account, you can do that within JotForm itself. Now, a new feature that has been added is approval flows. And so you can allow employees or colleagues to approve and deny submissions if that is something that you need within your business. The last thing that you can customize is the mobile notifications. So you can turn those on if you want to have those on for your app, which you can download from the App Store or Google Play, or you can turn it off if that's not something you need. Now, one more thing before we hit publish. When you build your form, not only can you drag in the form elements and do basic things to design your form, you also can heavily modify the look of your form by clicking on the form designer tool in the far right corner.
So after you have all of your fields in place, you even have taken a look at the settings, you may want to go back and change some of the colors or the styling to fit your branding. And that is where you'll locate colors, styles, themes, and layouts. There's even an advanced designer tab for those of you who want to take your form to the next level. So when all of that is done, you've built your form, you've changed the colors, you've changed the settings to automate what you need to help push your business forward, then all you need to do is click on publish. There are multiple ways that you can share your form. You can send a link to your form, you can invite by email, or you can even click on the left-hand side and embed the form on your website as a pop-up or in a light box. So depending on your unique needs for your business, you can even modify how the form is seen when you're ready to share it with your audience. The final thing is if you click on Jot Form in the top left-hand corner, you will see your form here. So to view your submissions, you'll just click on More, and here you will see all sorts of resources to help you to examine your data. You can click on submissions, you can create a report, you can even create a PDF document of the form submissions. So once your form is created and people are filling it out, there are very simple ways for you to capture that data beyond the email notifications. If you ever want to view your form, you can click on view under form and it will show you the direct link to your form and everything that you created. Thank you so much to JotForm for sponsoring this video. If you would like to create an account, go to LaShondaBrown.com slash JotForm to create an account today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I will teach you how to grow a biz without breaking the bank. Until next time, ta-ta for now.